Now, every Monday, we kick off our week on the right foot. We want to remind you that there are amazing people doing amazing things. It's proudly presented by Kubi Energy. It's Positive Reflections. Now, typically, this is where we would read you the emails that we've received from like James and show you a video like one that I got from Chris. And I want to let you guys know that those are coming up next Monday. Don't you worry. We've got them all filed away. I also got an amazing email from Kareen a while back who sent me a trash talk and a positive reflection in the same message. I was like, now that is my style of email. Kareen, your email's coming up. Don't you worry, next Positive Reflections. But today, I wanted to introduce you to a couple of uh, remarkable people that understand what community is all about. We're talking about mentorship today. And it's a pleasure to introduce you to Denisha Balu Shivji. Uh, is with the Boys and Girls Clubs, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Now, her story is incredible because she's been a little sister and now... The Big Sister Experience too. How cool is that? And Aaron Hoyland, he's a project manager in IT. He's been a big brother with BCBG Bigs for six years. And I said, what was it? Five, six, seven days ago on the show, I was going to find some way to get Hoyland on the show. Well, here he is, both of them. And so while we talk about mentorship, January is mentoring month at the Alberta Mentorship Program. The goal to increase awareness about the power of of mentoring. This is a great news story. Denisha, why don't we begin with you? How did you first get involved? You were just a little girl, right? I was. Thanks, Ryan, for having me here. It's great to see you again. Um, I was nine years old when I walked through those doors. Um, my mom, my parents had just uh, split up. We had moved from Calgary to Edmonton. Um, my mom was working three jobs to put a roof over my head and my sister's head. And she had the incredible foresight to enroll us with Big Brothers Big Sisters because she knew that we needed um, a, a role model, another role model in our lives while she was working to to support us. So that's how I got involved. And I've kind of just stayed 25 years this year that I have been involved with that agency in various ways. Well, what an amazing resource for you as a young girl. Uh, what an amazing resource for your mom who knew that the resource was available, first of all, which is a great news story in itself. How would you summarize? I mean, we're talking about a quarter century here. We're talking about 25 years. You could probably go on for an hour. But how would you summarize the role of that mentorship in your life through the years? Self-confidence. That's what it gave me um, throughout the years. Ryan, I met you, I think, six years ago when I ran for city council. Um, I couldn't have done that if I hadn't had the self-confidence to do that. And my big sister um, has been part of my life for the past 25 years. Um, she, when I had my daughter two years ago, she knitted a blanket for her um, that my daughter still loves today. So she, I think for me, it's that self-confidence, it's consistency. Um, I don't remember what we did, the activities we did together, but I remember she was there for me every single week. How cool. Aaron, how did you get involved in this program? It was about six years ago and uh, I was newly single. I had some time on my hands and uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters was running a program, um, 100 Men, 100 Days, they called it, where they're trying to recruit 100 male mentors in a little over three months. And so I did some reading about it and I you know, learned they have kind of a chronic shortage of male mentors. And I thought, you know, I, I have some time, you know, I, I may not be the, the perfect uh, you know, perfect person with a perfect life, but I feel like I have the capability of showing up for someone. So I applied and got matched with a young man who was uh, eight and he is now almost 15. Can you uh, explain to us, because because Aaron, you, you know, you joined this as a young guy yourself, you, you know, you're and, and you've got time on your hands. And, you know, I think of myself as a young guy with time on my hands. And the thing I was most interested in signing up for was a membership at a golf course. Uh, yet you volunteer you give your time and you're going to say, I don't want to take the selfish perspective here, but real talk. What was in it for you? What have you taken away from the mentoring experience? It's legitimately one of the most rewarding things I think I've done. I think that you, it can be intimidating before you start, right? You don't really know what to expect. You don't really know what it's going to be like. And it's really like I spend a couple hours, a couple times a month, going bowling, eating ice cream, cooking, building Lego. We built this little thing um, <laughs> a couple weeks ago. Is that a, that's like, an old rocket? Uh, yes, it's a Lego. Oh, yes, it's so a Lego Saturn cool. V rocket. Um, 
And it's just about like showing up and spending the time, right? And then you see this this person that, you know, when we first met, he was pretty shy and, you know, kind of, I wouldn't say withdrawn, but, you know, quite quiet and just kind of blossoming and growing in that assertiveness and self-confidence and, and that sense of self. And it's so rewarding to think that, you know, maybe I had a small part in that. I want to read uh, some of these stats. I mean, to, to paint a clear picture for people on the importance of mentoring. As mentioned, January is mentoring month, and I'm not making much of a secret of it. I'm hoping that a few real talkers sign up to mentor, and I'm also hoping that a few real talkers that have young kids or know of young kids that could benefit from this program reach out to get them involved as well. But let's take a look at some of the numbers here. 78% of mentees who came from social assistance backgrounds did not require the same as adults. Nearly four out of five. What about this? Over the past year, uh, this is per the Boys and Girls Clubs, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Edmonton and Area Society. So this is locally more than 2,500, 2,600 kids mentored over the past year. Boys who are mentored are twice as likely to believe that academic performance is important twice as likely. Uh, they're also two times less likely to develop so-called negative behaviors. In other words, it's a great way to keep people focused and on track. Girls who are mentored are four times less likely to bully others than those without a mentor, which is absolutely remarkable. I mean, Denisha, that alone you know, a way to address bullying, let alone healthy habits, let alone positive relationships, let alone the self-confidence that you talk about. I mean, it really is remarkable. There's evidence that this works and that this investment of time is so well worth it. Absolutely. And there's more recent evidence during the pandemic that kids who are mentored are less likely to feel anxiety, less likely to feel isolated. Um, more likely to, to deal with their mental health challenges, because I think all of us have been dealing with mental health challenges over the last two years, um, but kids more so. And what we're seeing in Edmonton specifically is children and youth who are going back and forth between at school and home learning. There's a big learning loss there that we're anticipating over the next three to five years. So not only is mentoring important now, but looking at the future, tutoring is going to be just as important and to be able to combine those two i think is a real game changer in, in our community aaron what does the time commitment look like for you i mean it feels like a bit of a tacky question but i just want to give people an understanding or an idea of what comes with the territory uh in my case it's usually a couple hours every week and a half somewhere around there i think sometimes the guideline they say is no more than once a week and no less than twice a month so right. you get land kind of somewhere in there and it depends on your schedule and their schedule and that sort of thing. Right. So you kind of feel it out early on and when you're, when you're available, when they're available and what works for both of you, but I haven't really found it particularly onerous. It's infrequent enough that you can find the time. People can learn more by checking out the website, Alberta mentors.ca. Now, as mentioned, of course, this is the last day of January, January's mentoring month, but it doesn't, I mean, through the year, uh, they're looking for people to become partners again at Alberta mentors.ca. Uh, before I thank you both for your time, Aaron, I have to ask you, I mean, you to me uh, are on the precipice of a hundred thousand Twitter followers. You got 18,000 right now. And I'm watching you. You're the, you're the smartest guy that most people have never heard of on Twitter. I, I started following you and I think you had like 1500 followers. I've seen you jump to 18,000 over a number of months. There's something about your insight I mean, I, quite frankly, I'm just I'm, I'm just going to kind of flirt with you a little bit here. I, I kind of yeah. want to be close personal friends with you, and I'm looking forward to meeting you in person. The way that your brain works, the way that you communicate in quick, biting, effective fashion. There's something about it. I want to give people a couple samples. These are just from the past couple of days. On Saturday, you tweeted, I shouldn't have to say this, but only some of us are Nazis isn't a compelling defense. You've got about 18,000 people that have decided that's a pretty good tweet. And then, of course, just yesterday, you tweet, it's hard not to notice that many of the same folks that always talk about supporting the troops and honoring veterans just decided to use the National War Memorial as both a parking lot and a urinal. What do you make of your Twitter experience? This is relatively new. You're, you're, you're shooting to Twitter stardom, quite frankly. Utterly surreal. Um I, I never thought I'd find myself in a situation where, and I hate even saying this, I have a platform, but... Uh, oh, you have I, a platform, pal. And I think it's it's validating, but I also think that it can be very dangerous to believe your own hype. 
And so I think that some humility goes a long way when you find yourself in this sort of situation. And feeding back to our, the Joe Rogan conversation from earlier, I think the bigger the platform, the more responsibility to use it uh, responsibly and to, to platform sources and people that are uh, reliable and evidence-based and things like that. And so I, I feel a lot of pressure to try and to talk about things that I think are important and matter and make sure that I'm... I'm promoting things that make the world a better place, as it were. I love this. Uh, people are starting. This is like hipsters and music. Everybody on the live chat now is trying to establish who followed you first. You know, <laughs> Kim says, I'm an Aaron OG. You know, she says he's a feminist. He's so very good at being kindly progressive and totally 100% on it every time. That from Kim. I just have time to read one. I mean, you're, you're talking about humility. I guess I better not read all the comments. But uh, in, in all seriousness, I'm such a big fan of both of you. Denisha, I haven't seen you in person forever. And I'm looking forward to the next time that our paths cross uh aaron you and i'll have to grab a beer sometime lunch will be on me thanks to both of you for the mentoring that you've done for being such incredible community contributors and thanks for making time for us this morning on real talk Thank so much you for having, having us. us you got it positive reflections is presented every monday or our first show of the week by our friends at Kubi Energy. You can send us your positive reflection. We're going to integrate a few more interviews like this. The feel-good stories. The good news. We'll take your submissions by way of our email inbox. Talk at RyanJesperson.com or of course our hashtag RealTalkRJ. What a day. Sounds like, depending on where you are in the country, if you're in our neck of the woods in Alberta, keep travel to a minimum if you can. We are getting hit with a weather event and to our Fellow Canadians in Ottawa, we wish you well. We'll continue to monitor that developing story, plus the Coots border crossing and everything else making news. Tomorrow kicks off Black History Month. Expect some incredible conversations. Sir Hoyle's working on those. And make it a great Monday, friends. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.